So my name is Melissa Sprague. I'm in my second year at NHTI where I am studying education, special education and mindful communications. It is January 31st of 2021 and it is about 3 at 10 o'clock. Um, so this is Dan. Today we're talking with Dan. Dan's a grandfather. He's a very gifted pianist and an overall magnificent human being. Um, he's a very active community member who could almost always be found around town prior to COVID, really connecting with people using the power of his music, um, especially at our local coffee shop, which also serves as a sort of social meeting house and informal center for the arts in our community. Um, Dan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I, I sure can. My mother was a, still is a piano teacher. She's uh, in her 90s. She was my first piano teacher instilled in me the love of music, the importance of practicing. And of course, I loved the music, but I never practiced. So I broke her heart, but I was going to be a rock and roll star. But that didn't work out either. <laughs> but the music has been an integral part of my whole life since I can even remember. Uh, you know, I make my living as a landscaper, but every day I come home and I practice with my fingers. Like every day, every day, every night, and because it, it's 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 part of me. It's one of the biggest parts. Of me. So awesome. Okay. So I'm asking everyone to reflect a little bit on what their lives were like before COVID, and what a typical day was like for them. And then I'm asking them to envision what it's like for them now. Um, what's different? Can you tell me about how your life is different? Oh my gosh, I, absolutely. When I first started playing at, at this coffee shop in Goffstown, uh, I would meet people all the time because I love that piano. It's called an upright grand. It's tall, it's high. And uh, the, the girl at the coffee shop would let me take the front off to show the children that would come around how how it would work and it was so much fun and then every now and then I would have someone come in and say oh Dan do you know this tune and they'd whistle something oh I don't know let me see I'll give it a try and then all of a sudden this was an old woman she had tears down her eyes I said what's the matter you've just you brought me back to my first date with my husband I said oh my god I'm so sorry so no keep playing keep playing and those stories are, are by the hundreds. Uh, for the first two years, I started to play at Apotheca when they had that piano. And then of course, COVID came in and I couldn't see anyone. And I've, what, I had 150, 200 new friends or uh, uh, people that I even knew by, just by their face that I, I lost them temporarily. And that was brutal uh, for me. Uh, because this was such a wonderful way to share emotion. And, you know, my music is sometimes the shortcut to someone's memory of the past, which is either beautiful or sad or, or all of the above or, or, or joyful. And it's what an incredibly fun thing to be able to do and how awful to not be able to do that cloaks with people. And of course, you know, you can't hug a Zoom screen, but you can certainly tell people, oh, I miss you. How are you doing? How are things? And this this has been a long, like everybody, year, but especially for a musician, someone who loves people and loves hearing about people. Uh, it's been it's been hard. And yet social media is a blessing because I can reach out to them through Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Um, very important to do. You so, bet. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so what are some challenges that you've faced over the past year or else as a result of COVID? I well, know there have been a few. Well, I can tell you, just ironically, after suffering for a couple of years with a, with a, with a bad knee and a bad shoulder, um, I had a goodbye concert March 7th of last year at this coffee shop. March 9th, I, I had my shoulder reconstructed. And then of course, COVID shut everything down. So I feel extremely blessed about that. Uh, and then several months later, just two months ago, I had a new knee put in. So I've been able to rebuild myself uh, at a distance and kudos to all the medical professionals. They're, they're, they're fearless and wonderful. Uh, but COVID has also taught me to, oh gosh, draw upon my own 
ability to wait and relearn what patience is, relearn what faith is, relearn what hope is. Because everybody thinks, oh, Mr. Dan, he's always happy. I, listen, I've got my moments like all of us. Uh, however, the, I, maybe one of the biggest things my mother was able to give me was a chance to be able to find comfort in the music uh, and all music. Uh, and, but again, it's as, as I watched this pandemic develop, the amount of people that were so torn from not being able to see their friends, their relatives, their family members, um, it's been awful. But, but you know, the hope, hope springs eternal, uh, especially if you're an artist of any kind, musician or, or whatever, you know? So, I mean, I hope that helps. <laughs> No, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, so, I mean, that kind of answers my next question, which is how have you dealt with or overcome those challenges? Do you feel like you have anything more to say about that? Well, yes, I do. I think the biggest, one of the biggest challenges of all was to truly learn patience with my three operations and wait for the body to heal. Um, I, I had to get into meditation class because I'm, I was always so active. Uh, and I had to slow down. I had to just use a day to just sit and just let the passage of time do its thing. In fact, you know, James Taylor said, you know, the secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Well, you know, some of these days were as long as years and for me. So that was one of the biggest challenges was the, you know, the always on 100 mile an hour Dan had to do the turtle walk and, and remind myself this will be good, but you've got to give it time. And at the same time, realizing what everyone else is going through on these similar levels, uh, brutal, brutal at times. It is. It's tough. Um, so how are you finding comfort or meaning in these challenging times? Quite simply, once in a great while, I will, even with my mask, I will see someone at the hardware store, or luckily the coffee shop is opened again, and um, I'll see someone that recognizes me before I recognize them because they see my, they remember my eyes and my, the smile on my crow's feet. My, my, Dan, how are you? I said, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but it's great to see you. How are you? <laughs> but th that means gold to me because the, the amount of joy and fun and camaraderie with just talking with people at a coffee shop about what they're doing, what they're not doing uh, is something I've missed. But yet now that we get around with our mask and our social distance, once in a great while, you find a friend that recognizes you because they remember your eyes. I mean, that, that just, that's ah, amazing. I, it's, 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 wonderful. it's wonderful. It's very powerful. And, and that's part of how I survive and continue to survive is, is, is to see people um, and, and, you know, ask through the mask, how are you doing? How are things going? And, uh, and wanted to honestly know. You don't, just don't say you're oh, fine. Just, no, if it's not, tell me. I, I'd like to know. And can I do anything to help you uh, with that? So. Wonderful. So. Um, so tell me, have you started any new projects? Have you rekindled any old relationships or taken up a new hobby? Well, all, th all three of the above. All three of the above. Yes, because I've I've put a lot more of my face on Facebook. And I find people from 10, 15, 20 years ago, hey, Dan, how are you doing? I, have, I see old friends I went to high school with, and they've, they've got married names, so I don't recognize them until I see their face. So it's been wonderful to, to connect with them. Um, and I, I always get the, the, the fun thing, hey, you know, you're a little sour on that song, so you've got to practice again. But then the other thing I've gone back to is wood carving. And one of the things I used to do a lot with my landscaping is pick up roots and make fairy houses for all the kids. And that I've gone back to. Uh, there's no moss right now, but there's certainly plenty of twigs that the you know, season has blown down. And the third thing I've done is I have a new keyboard that I, I cheat with because as much as I love my piano, um, you know, and I do the, I love my baby grand. I've got this electronic device that is basically a computer with keys. And, and it is so much fun to play that and, and admire the engineers that also must be musicians because the sustain and the and the attack of the of the trumpet player or or the of this or the strings with the wind, you know, I feel like I'm on a California beach, um, or I can do the soundtrack to Jaws. <laughs> it's so much fun. 
so yeah, that is the third part of my of that question. My hobby and, and my love is is of course music, but the electronic side is a whole different world for me to, to do now. Well, that's exciting. Um, let's see, we've got a little bit of time left. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to tell us, a story about an experience that you've had or anything else you'd like people to know? Well, I think I, the other thing that's really fueled my ability to keep going, I have two grandchildren, uh, age, one is my grandson is six and my uh, granddaughter is nine. But there were two little girls that used to come into the coffee shop with their mother and they were about six. And they just knew me as Mr. V. They couldn't say my name. And they loved the movie Trolls, as did I. And of course, any kind of movie, what would you know, uh, any movie be without music? But um, this one particular song from the Pierre Gin Suite in the, in the Hall of the Mountain King is what the Bergens, uh, they're the bad people in this Trolls movie. Well, that's their theme song. And I would play that for these little girls. So every week, They'd come in, Mr. V, play, can you play the bad guys song? I, said, I sure can. <laughs> but these are these are little moments that, that you remember your whole life. And they'll as I get older, they remember. There was this man that used to scare us with the with the with the Bergen's song. Uh, and and the and I have a hundred of those stories, but that one sticks out to me because working with my grandson on the piano doesn't practice for me like I didn't practice for my mother. But he, he knows the songs. He, he can't always say them, but, oh, that's from this, or that's from that. And that's assimilating tones to actual beautiful uh, movies and, and, and events, you know? Absolutely. So. Um, do you feel like living through this pandemic has changed you? How has it changed you? Uh, well, it's it made, yes, it has. I, I've always been, you know, the glass half full. <laughs> Hi, puppy. <laughs> Sorry well, about that. That's fine. That you know, you know, this must love dogs, right? That's a movie I love. Uh, it's changed me in this regard that it, I, I have such a, a higher appreciation for first responders, medical personnel, even the people that are at the grocery store that they're working because they have to, and they're the kindness. I mean, there's there's some turkeys out there too. Is, but the kindness and the overall feeling that, gee, we we need to stick together and not and, and, and just understand that we're all have chapters and levels of, of problems that we are going through. And, and, and what has changed me, maybe even just minutely compared to before, is just more of a thankfulness for all these people. I mean, I was always thankful, but even now, so much more so after having seen their struggles more acutely. I love it. That's wonderful. Um, Thank you. Let's see. I think we've just about covered it. Well, that's great. Um, would you like to share some music with us? I would. I would. And I will play you this song that I love that I played for the lady that I made cry. And. Uh, Come a little closer. This, I looked at this woman after I started playing and she was you know, crying her eyes out, but she said, don't stop. So I kept going and this, you know, I have a hundred of those stories, but that that's what I love doing. I just love doing that. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your music with us and thank you for sharing your story. I really appreciate so much that you're willing to do this. Well, it's my, it's my pleasure, my pleasure. It's, it's certainly a lifeblood for me to be able to see people, even even just on the screen. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for brightening our lives on social media and keeping us connected in an important way, even 
when we're isolated in our homes. Yeah, well, you're certainly welcome and welcome and uh, say hi to puppy. <laughs> Thank you.